Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It does make a big, big difference when you do that. So today, folks, I've got an incredibly nerdy video for you. And I'll put a timestamp on screen now. If you want to skip straight to the comparison, please feel free to do so. But a little bit about what we're going to be looking at today before we get going. Now, a capacitor is generally used in the tone circuit of a guitar. And as you turn your tone knob down, what that capacitor essentially does is the more you turn the tone knob down, it takes more and more of your high treble frequencies and dumps them to ground. So it essentially has the effect of darkening the tone of your guitar. And the value of the capacitor in your tone circuit determines how dark your guitar gets when you roll the tone completely off. So what you will typically find, and this is a very vague rule, you can mix and match and use much bigger or lower value capacitors, but generally speaking, a very kind of, you know, ballpark thing is 0.022 microfarad capacitors for humbuckers and 0.047. That's typically what, or historically what Fender used in their kind of tellies and strats to an extent. But where this gets a lot more interesting and a lot more heated, depending on which forums you read, is the type of capacitor. Now, back in the late 50s, when Gibson were making their burst Les Pauls, they were using Sprague 0.022 microfarad paper in oil bumblebee capacitors. And paper in oil, and it essentially refers to the internal manufacture of the capacitor. And there's lots of different ones, ceramic and paper in foil, wax impregnated, various different types of capacitor. Now, where the type of capacitor really matters is in something like a guitar amp. Because in a guitar amp, those capacitors will often be what we call coupling capacitors. So your entire signal travels through that capacitor before it comes out of the speaker. So the type of capacitor and how it sounds and how it behaves is incredibly important, which is why when you see sort of high-end amp manufacturers, I'm a big fan of Dr. Z, for example, you'll quite often hear Dr. Z shouting about how they use like Jupiter reissue caps and they're the closest thing to the old Jupiter caps because the type of cap and the manufacturer and how it's made and how it behaves is incredibly important. Now, in a guitar tone circuit, the theory says that the type of capacitor shouldn't matter whatsoever. The only thing that matters is the value of the capacitor because instead of your signal passing through that capacitor and coming down the guitar lead into your amp, you, everything that goes through that capacitor is dumped to ground. So you never actually hear anything that travels through the capacitor. So in theory, the only thing that should matter is the value. So if you take a paper in oil capacitor and a ceramic capacitor, assuming they are exactly the same value, they should sound exactly the same. But despite that theory, lots of manufacturers will ship their guitars with paper in oil capacitors, very sort of high-end boutique guitars. And many kind of mass-produced guitars will ship with very cheap ceramic capacitors in there. And lots of companies market their capacitors as tone upgrades. And if you use this capacitor, it will give you a smoother sound. And this is a much higher quality capacitor. So today I wanted to dive into what that actually means. When these companies are selling their new old stock Russian military paper and oil capacitor as a tone upgrade, does that actually provide any upgrade in tone over a ceramic capacitor worth a couple of pence. So what I've done today is I've amassed seven different capacitors here and they are different um, compositions. They're made with different materials and they are very much worth different amounts of money. So in the sort of very upper end of the spectrum, I have this one here. This is a Lux Bumblebee replica. Now this uh, retails for, I think, £31.95 here in the UK. And this is essentially made to the exact specifications that the old Sprague bumblebees used in the old Gibson Les Pauls were. So it's paper in oil, and you can always tell a paper in oil capacitor, or at least a very good fake, because they have this great big dollop of solder on the top of them here, which is essentially when they pour the oil in, how they seal the tube is with that solder. So you can always tell a paper in oil. So this is historically accurate to the nth degree. Little side point here, the Gibson historic spec bumblebees that they sell for huge amounts of money 
aren't actually paper and oil bumblebees whatsoever. They are very, very cheap capacitors inside a black plastic tube painted to look like a bumblebee. So if you are after exact historic accuracy, and you're going to spend a lot of money on a reissue capacitor, I would very much go with something like uh, the Lux or I think Emerson do them and a few other companies, uh, rather than the Gibson ones, because as uh, uh, one forum goer found out when they cracked one open, it's like a five pence capacitor wrapped in a plastic tube. So not particularly honest on the part of Gibson there. Now, there are some other types of capacitor I've got here. Tropical fish capacitors, they're not actually made of tropical fish, they're just painted to look like them. This is a mullard capacitor, and you'll quite often find these used in very posh boutique pedals. You'll quite often see tropical fish caps advertised as a selling point. These are very common to find online. This is a old, new old stock Russian military capacitor. Paper and oil again, which you can tell from the little cap. And these are kind of the sort of budget end of the paper and oil um, capacitor type things if you don't want to go all out and pay for a Lux. Uh, orange drops, these are very commonly used as kind of upgrades to your standard ceramic tone caps. You'll find these in a lot of um, like wiring looms on eBay. And right down in the bottom of the uh, price spectrum as it were, we have this little fella here which is a ceramic capacitor. Very common to find in uh, guitars, you know, Gibson's all the way down to kind of mass produced guitars. You know, why uh, 90s Gibson Les Paul had ceramic caps in. And this retails on eBay for three pence. You can buy a hundred for three pounds something. So what I wanted to look into today is, is this three pence ceramic capacitor exactly the same or different to a capacitor worth a thousand times more in terms of money? Now, a few things to bear in mind when it comes to capacitors. Firstly, they vary with temperature, and paper in oil caps especially are especially susceptible to this. So as you'll see in this little clip I'll drop in now, if you connect your capacitors to a multimeter and blast them with a hairdryer, which it won't surprise you to learn that I own, you'll see that as the capacitor heats up, the capacitance increases also. So for example, this Lux Bumblebee, I measured this a couple of days ago as exactly 0.022 microfarads. I've just measured it today and it's 0.025. So on a hotter day as it is today, the capacitance, especially of paper and oil, goes up. And also there, as I spoke about in my video about pots not too long ago, that everything that's ever manufactured in the world ever is manufactured to a tolerance. And depending on how tight that tolerance is, it, that will determine the exact value of what you might end up with. But as with the pots I was testing a few weeks ago, you don't know the exact capacitance of your capacitor unless you measure them yourself. And as I said, they vary with temperature, so you have to measure all your capacitors on the same day in the same place within a short period of time to get an accurate reading. So what I've done today is where I've got several of the same capacitor, I've put them all on a post-it note and measured their exact capacitance. And where I have just one example, I've measured the exact capacitance of these as well. And I'll be sure to put these exact capacitances on screen because variations and, you know, these are manufactured to plus minus 20% tolerance. This old Russian military tube here is manufactured to within 10%. So the exact capacitance will vary. And unless you're buying a thousand of each type of capacitor, measuring them all at the same time, at the same place on the same day, and choosing the exact ones that match up completely, you're never going to get seven capacitors of exactly the same capacitance. So I've done my absolute best to get the values as close as possible, but there are small differences. So I will put that on screen. Now, the guitar I'm gonna be using today is my Gibson Les Paul Custom because caps are a big topic on guitar forms for any guitar, really, but they are especially discussed at length with kind of vintage reissue Les Pauls. So this Les Paul over here, I've kind of done to like late 50s spec. Monty's Path pickups, Bumblebee capacitors usually, uh, VI pots, 50s wiring, so it's all kind of that ballpark. And I'm just going to use the bridge pickup today because ultimately the capacitor affects the high frequencies of the guitar and that's where we're going to hear the most. So I'm just going to put all of these capacitors into my Les Paul, play the same things with exactly the same settings marked by the knob pointers and put the footage side by side to see once and for all whether the type of capacitor 
makes a difference in the guitar tone circuit. Do we need to be spending 30 something pounds on a posh Lux paper and oil bumblebee over a three penny ceramic one? Let's find out. So without further ado folks, let's go. <laughs>
are, folks. Now, please do comment underneath. Let me know your thoughts on what you just heard. I'd love to chat about all this in the comment section with you. But having just edited the audio and listened to it all side by side, I think what we found was largely what I was expecting, which is there is no huge difference between any of those seven capacitors. And what few differences there are, I think, can largely be put down to the slight differences in capacitance as measured, and also my playing, because it's impossible to play the same thing seven times in exactly the same way, so there will be some differences there. But to my ears, there were a few differences that did surprise me, and the one that really got me was the difference with how the guitar sounded with everything completely completely wide open, because in theory with the tone control on 10 it shouldn't be having any effect on the sound of the guitar at all. But to my ears, this Wema capacitor for example, made the guitar sound slightly darker and less glassy up top than this Bumblebee. Have a little listen back and see if you agree. <laughs> So to my ears, this Bumblebee, despite being the highest measured capacitance of any of those seven, had more clarity than this little Weemer, even with the tone control on 10. Now please do let me know if I'm going mad and hearing things there, but if you agree, please let me know why you think that is, because surely if this is the higher of the two in terms of capacitance, it should be making the guitar sound darker, if anything, but it really wasn't. Now, the main question I wanted to either kind of prove or disprove in this video was, is this little three pen ceramic capacitor worse than this 32 pound bumblebee? And the answer is of course, no. There are very few differences between them. Now, to my ears, they were slightly different. And I think what, you know, I'm thinking is this bumblebee has slightly more clarity to it. And I don't mean brightness, because it's certainly not that. But when you're sort of strumming chords, I can hear more of the individual notes and strings with this bumblebee than this ceramic. The, the sort of cheaper capacitors seem to my ears to sound a little bit sort of darker and more soupy, less defined, I suppose. So again, please do let me know if you agree. Now, if you have a ceramic capacitor in your guitar, is it worth upgrading it? Well, it completely depends what you want to achieve. Is the orange drop as it's marketed as a warmer, smoother, more posh tone? No, I, to my ears in that experiment, I really wouldn't say it isn't, it's very, very similar. Is it worth spending 32 pounds on a Lux replica Bumblebee? It depends what you want to achieve. If you are going for complete 100% tone, is it worth spending £32 on the capacitor to upgrade your tone over your ceramic? I really wouldn't say so. I think any differences are so subtle, it's not worth that amount of money. But if you're going for vintage accuracy and it looks the part and you're arguably getting a little bit more note clarity and definition, it depends how much financial value you put on that. You might want to go with one of these if it makes you happy. And as I've said before in several videos, how using a piece of gear makes you feel is I think equally as important as how it sounds. So yes, you can go with these, they're fantastic capacitors. These are really good too. And given the price difference, if you're on the fence about it, go with the cheap one because these, are arguably worth the money in some senses, but if you're going for pure tone, should you be playing around with capacitors? Absolutely, if you're playing around with the value of the capacitor, but I really wouldn't get too hung up on what type of capacitor you use. It arguably makes a difference, but really not a big one. So I would spend more time playing with cap values and you know pops and pickups and things like that, rather than going after posh capacitors. But that's just my opinion. Please do let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. I'd love to chat about all this stuff with you guys. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope this video was useful for you when it comes to playing around with caps in your guitars. Please do carry on subscribing to this channel if you haven't done so yet. It really does make a big difference when you do that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.